So the other day I read this stat that the average woman does 2.7 hours a day of housework. I mean, that's almost the equivalent of 42 days per year doing cleaning. Hey guys, welcome back. If you are like me, you probably don't wanna spend 2.7 hours a day doing cleaning. However, I do love the feeling of a clean and tidy home. So today I am sharing my nine tips as a busy, full-time working mom of three. I have nine tips for you. These are all new. I have never shared these tips before and I think they're gonna be really helpful. Okay, so tip number one is to invest in multiple vacuum cleaners. I personally have several vacuum cleaners. I, I've actually got three and I'm thinking of getting a fourth, but hear me out. I've got one robot vacuum cleaner. I run that daily and it gets under the furniture. It gets all of the random dust around. Then I've got my big shark upright vacuum cleaner that I love. It's a little bit heavier. You have to plug it in and kind of lug it around. And it's really good because it does like good deep cleaning. Then I've also got my Dyson stick vacuum cleaner and it is battery operated. So I can just grab it, go from room to room. I'm actually considering getting like a smaller battery operated vacuum cleaner that I can have upstairs. I haven't gone there yet. Maybe it's too much. I'm still thinking about it. But I think investing in multiple vacuum cleaners will save you so much time. When I, I used to not have the Dyson stick vacuum. And so anytime I needed to vacuum the house, which was act, actually quite frequently, I would go and get the whole big plug-in vacuum cleaner. And it was such a chore. It was really difficult to lug around. I would have to like find a place to plug it in. The cord was never long enough and it was such a pain. Now I simply grab the stick vacuum. I use it daily. I mean, I use it more than daily. I use it many times a day, but it works really well and it saves me so much time. My next tip to save you time is to batch your errands into one day. So I do not like leaving the house and doing errands multiple times a week. If I know I've got things to do during the week, I will batch them into one day. I do them on one weekend day and I get everything done. That way I'm not spending hours driving around town or doing these errands. They're all just done quickly and easily in a, in a one day batched schedule. This really frees up my time and I feel like I can get a lot more done. Okay, so my next tip to save time is to figure out a really good grocery shopping schedule. So I used to go grocery shopping on Sundays and I still often do go on Sunday mornings. However, I have found that instead of going on Sunday mornings, I can actually go on a weekday morning, but right after I drop the kids off for school, I drop them off around 745 in the morning. Then I can go to my grocery store and get all of my grocery shopping done for the day and be back home and ready to work by like 8.30 in the morning. I've kind of figured out that going grocery shopping on an early weekday morning ends up taking about 45 minutes door to door instead of over an hour door to door like it does on the weekends. The reason is there is no one at the grocery store on weekday mornings and the checkout, there is no one in line. There, there is no one sort of like in the way of the products that you're trying to find. It's just so much faster and easier. So I highly recommend figuring out your grocery shopping schedule and you can definitely like trim some time off if you go early on a weekday. And the other thing I do when I go grocery shopping is I know exactly what I buy. I have a list and I know exactly where it is in the store. So I'm just, I just feel very efficient when I'm doing my grocery shopping. Okay, so my next tip is to use your mop for several purposes. So instead of just thinking that the mop with a microfiber head is only for your floors, there are so many things that you can clean with a mop. Honestly, if the surface is flat, you can clean it with the mop. All you need to do is, you know, wash the heads and use them for different purposes, but you can clean your cabinets with a mop. You can clean your showers, your tiles, your bathroom floors. You can clean your walls, even if they're painted, even if they're wallpapered. The mop is so versatile. So don't just think of your mop as for your floor. Think of it as this really big cleaning tool that you can use all over your house. You can even use the dry mop and just kind of get rid of the cobwebs that we all have up high. And it works really well for that. Okay, so I know I said these tips were all new, but there's one that I find that's very important that I wanted to reshare. And it's about giving your products time to work. It's called dwell time. And the idea is that when you've got a dirty surface that you want to clean, you spray your product and you let it sit for at least two minutes, sometimes up to 10 minutes. So you spray the area liberally and let it sit. This is the secret to cleaning fast and efficiently. You just spray everything down, give it some time, and then you can easily wipe away the dirt and the grime. It will get disinfected because you've given it time. 
It is the fastest and most efficient way to clean. It also doesn't waste any product. For years, I was spraying and then immediately wiping and things weren't coming clean and I was having to scrub them. I was having to respray them multiple times and I didn't know why my cleaning products weren't working. It is all because I was not giving the products time to work. Okay, my next tip is to not multitask. Just hear me out here. So the idea here is instead of doing multiple tasks in one room, try to do something for the whole house. So if you're getting the mop out because you're cleaning the whole kitchen top to bottom and you're gonna mop the kitchen floor, mop the whole floor instead in your whole house. If you're going to the trouble of getting the mop out and getting the water, I just find it to be much more efficient to mop the entire floor rather than just doing a small thing in one room. Or if you're cleaning your living room and you've decided you're gonna dust the living room, well, don't just stop at the living room, you know, dust all of the surfaces that are around in your living room and, and around in your first floor of your house. I mean, you've gotten the duster out, you're already going, so just get it all done. I think like if you've already gotten the supplies out and you're working on that task, it's just a whole lot easier to just do that whole task for the whole house rather than just having done all of that prep work and effort just for like one room. Okay, so my next tip is to prepare for the next day the night before. I do this in many, many ways, but since we're just talking about cleaning, I will just give you some ideas and some things that I do. If I'm going to be cleaning the bathroom the next day, I may put bathroom cleaner into the toilet and let it soak overnight if I've got a particularly dirty toilet. Another thing I like to do is I will put my dishes in the dishwasher and I will run my dishwasher while I'm sleeping so that I can wake up and empty the dishwasher. Or I might do with my clothing, I may put it into the dryer before I go to bed and then I wake up and then I can fold my clothes. You probably do this in other ways around your home. You know, maybe you put your coffee and you set it to brew for the morning or maybe you make your breakfast the night before or your lunch the night before and you leave it in the fridge. You probably set your clothes out for the next day the night before. It's kind of the same idea. If you know you're gonna be cleaning something the next day, just prepare yourself as much as possible the night before and that will save you a lot of time. Okay, so this next tip is a little bit boring, but if I had known this, before I would have been so much better off. This tip is when you are using cleaning products or new cleaning tools, always test a small area first. I damaged my stainless steel refrigerator this way and I also damaged my stove this way. You wanna use products that are appropriate for the job and you wanna use cleaning materials that aren't gonna damage your surfaces because you want your appliances to last as long as possible. You want them to look nice while they last. Take some time to make sure when you're using new things to just test it out in like a small inconspicuous spot. You will save yourself so much headache and worry and time and you will keep your appliances in tip top shape. Trust me, a small test will go a very long way. Okay, so my next tip to save some time is kind of like a three in one. It's all about your bathroom and all about your bathroom shower. So the first thing, every time you use your shower, make sure you're squeegeeing. You wanna squeegee your tiles, your shower walls, your doors, if you've got glass doors, acrylic doors, anything that's a hard, flat surface, you can squeegee it. That will keep your shower so much cleaner for so much longer. The second thing is to run your fan while you're taking a shower and then try to run it for 10 minutes after you take a shower. The number one cause of mold and mildew in your bathroom is moisture in the air, and so if you can get rid of that moisture through your fan, you will be so much better off and you will have to do so much less cleaning and it will save you a lot of time. Bathrooms are one of the hardest rooms to keep clean. They're one of the dirtiest rooms in your home. So I think that these two tips will really help you to keep it clean and, and in the long run, you'll be doing less work. Okay, and then kind of my last tip around the shower is if you've got a shower curtain, make sure that you always keep it open. I see so many people taking a shower and then they open the curtain and they step out of the shower and then they go out on about their day and they leave the curtain push to one side. What happens then is it never dries fully and it gets moldy and mildewy and then guess what? And then it smells. So you, every time you take a shower and you get out, just open the whole shower curtain, leave it open for the rest of the time and let that shower curtain dry. It will save you so much time and your shower will never smell bad. Your shower curtain won't smell bad. It's, it's a good tip to keep things clean for longer and save you time. Okay, so speaking of saving time, bathrooms are a notorious hotspot in the house. I'm gonna link a video here that gives you lots of great tips on how to keep your bathroom cleaner for longer. There are so many things you can do. I don't clean my bathroom as a deep clean very often because I do all of these tips and my bathroom is in such good shape because of it. So click on that video and I will see you over there. Thanks so much for watching.